being sort of a negative thing. But tyrants in that, the Greek word tyrants in that time meant people who gain by pow power by force. But that wasn't always a bad thing because they were usually the lower class people or people who had sympathies toward the merchants. And so when the tyrants would gain power, they would actually do some good reforms that included the lower classes. So it wasn't always bad, even though we think of it, tyrants, as uh, a negative word because they took power by force, and that's where that came from. So they had that going for them. They had, um, in there uh, later then, we had a couple other important people that did some reforms. Um, one of them was Clisthenes, and well, before him there was someone. Who was it? I know there was someone. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Pisistratus was another tyrant that took uh, control by force, but he helped the farmers. He took some land from the nobles and distributed it, and he started building projects to give people jobs, and the economy went up under him. He did a good job, and then Clisthenes. And Clisthenes was the first one to actually make a legislature that had power, which was the beginning of Athens' limited democracy. So in Athens, they had a limited democracy. In other words, the people had a voice, but not all the people, you know, just the ones in the legislature. So it was the first kind of democracy um, that we know about. And Athens didn't give um, women voting rights or allow them to be in the assembly, but uh, they thought women were a little less than. They had education um, for the boys. They were educated in subjects like memorizing poetry. Oratory was really important during that period. And they were also taught about democracy and some of the ideas that have grown up, unlike Sparta, which put military above everything else. Now, with that in mind, listen to your assignment. And if you want, I can let you start it in class today. You are going to write an imaginary story. And your story, in your story, and I've had some fun stories, after you write them, we'll have a party where we have refreshments and I read the best stories to you and we'll just have a fun day. But first, let's talk about what the st stories are. In the story, you are going to either, your main character is either going to be a Spartan or an Athenian. Okay, got that much? They have to have a Greek name, and I'll show you a list of Greek names that you can choose from if you want, or just go on your computer and put Greek names. There's tons of them. They have to have a Greek name. It can be male or female. They have to be within five years of your age, so it's someone around about your age that this is happening to. And this is what happens to your character. If your character is in Sparta, they're somehow going to end up in Athens. And that's the part you have to make up. You know, did the gods transform them there? Were they taken as a prisoner of war? What happened that they got from Sparta to Athens? Because Spartans did not go to Athens willingly. And the other way around, if your main character is an Athenian, they are going to end up in Sparta somehow. And you have to tell us how that happened. And then the most important part of the story is, when you tell us how that happened, you're going to tell us what they saw that was different and what they thought of it, and not say something like, um, let's see. All right, let me read you this. Please don't write inane, vague comments like these from previous pe papers. She likes Sparta, Sparta better than Athens because the guys were really buff. This comment insinuates that this fem female writer would like to be with buff guys and does not consider the ancient Spartan men did live with women. Or how about this one? He thought the architecture of Athens was a lot more cool than in Sparta. What architecture? What did he notice that he thought was cool about it? You are required to tell at least five things that your character notices different in the other place. Yes? If our character is a girl, can they still, like if they get transformed to Sparta or they are uh -huh. in Sparta, can they be a warrior or not? Since oh, sure. Were only oh, the women were trained. Spartan women were but, trained as... Yeah, Spartan women were. They were really, they were trained also in dance and weaponry. They were very strong. So it can be a woman. And the final part of your story is going to be, does your character decide they want to stay in the new place or go back to their original place and why? Why do they like home better or why do they like this new place better? Okay, so I've got a map of Athens that I'll give you. Can you pass those out? 
And this is really I'm cool so because I've been up here so many times. This, this jutting rock here is still there with the Acropolis on top, and it's, it's a hike up to the top, and it's really exciting. Um, and it shows you all the places in Athens to give you a little idea for your story. And then here are the directions for the story. Sparta at war. Now there's going to be two particular wars that were really big as far as, far as, far as Greece was concerned. One is the Persian War where they were attacked from outside of Greece and they banded together. All these warring little city-states that were always fighting each other, they banded together and they fought the Persians. It seemed like an impossible foe, but I'll tell you right now, they did it. They won. And then the second one is called the Peloponnesian Wars. Does anyone know what the Peloponnese is? Do you know? I'll tell you. Peloponnese is the name of the peninsula that Greece is on, the Peloponnesus. And so they call it because it was within Greece. It was like civil war where they fought with each other, mainly Sparta against Athens. As you can tell, they weren't the, on the best terms in their lifestyle. They had a war. So let's talk about those two wars and see what happened. First, the Persian invasion of Greece. Um, it happened in 490, number one. 490 under Darius. Who does this go to? Um, Shauna in the back. Okay, so King Darius of Persia came and invaded Greece in 490. After his death, because he kept hammering away, but he didn't really completely conquer Greece, he was not very happy about it. And his son, number two, after his death, his son, King Xerxes, led a massive army to try again. Number three, King Leonidas, and you saw how to spell that, it's like Leo, like the lion. Now, I looked up the Greek pronunciation and they said Leonidas, but in the movie I think they said Leonidas, so we'll just go with that. Um, so King Leonidas of Sparta met the Persians at a pass called Thermopylae. This is a famous battle and it's what was depicted in the movie 300 if you want to see that, it's a good movie. Um, Thermopylae, spelled like this. Whoops, it's tricky, so I'll put it up here. Y-L-E. Okay, at the pass, in the, in the little town, in the area of Thermopylae, there was a pass. And the Spartan army, I'll just tell you that under Leonidas, they, um, they prepared themselves for battle, they oiled their bodies, um, they got ready to fight, and then the Persians came toward the pass. And because the pass narrowed, and the, and the Spartans were so strong that for hours they could keep fighting. Imagine their, their conditioning. And I think for sure they would have won that battle, except something happened. Um, a, let's look at A first. Three says, Leonidas met the Persians at Thermopylae. And Thermopylae had a mountain pass that was narrow. That's number three. A, this caused disproportionate casualties to the Persians. In other words, tons, A is tons of Persians were slaughtered at this pass. B, finally overcome, uh, the Spartans finally lost their third day in a famous last stand. And here's what happened. Um, a shepherd or a, uh, someone that was working there who knew the area, who was a Greek, and should have been on, you know, he was close to the Spartans, he went to the Persians, and he was a real traitor because it was the Persians against the Greeks, and he was a Greek. So he goes to the Persians, and I'm sure he said, if you pay me so much, I'll tell you how to get to these Spartans. And he told about a path around that they could come behind the Spartans. And so then, if you watch 300, you know that they were then fought from both sides, and that was too much, and they lost. And C, there is a monument standing still today, to the Spartans who died in that pass, and I'm going to tell you what it says, and you can write it down. It says, this one, we don't have to write it down. Oh, did I put it down? Okay, good. Go tell the Spartans, passerby, that here, obedient to their laws, we lie. All right, so Persia did not defeat Greece. Yay, Greece, they won the Persian War. Now, there was, a short, there was another little battle that I wanted to mention here, and that was the Mycenaean Revolt. Who were the Mycenaeans? 
They were the slaves. They're slaves, right. And it says that the Mycenaeans revolted in 435. Would you not want to revolt if hot-blooded adolescent boys were running over there and killing you all the time and you were a slave? I mean, that was pretty pretty awful. You were the cook and everything for these, these warriors. But here's how they saw their opportunity. Number one, there were a series of devastating earthquakes in Sparta. So the earthquakes caused problems. I don't have all this written down there, do I? Yeah. It's all printed? Oh my gosh, that is weird. Okay, so you know this. I don't need to do it. You can read it yourself. Um, that loosened their hold on this uh, Mycenaeans. And the sad thing is that it says right here the Athenians offered to help Sparta, but um, they said no. They really needed the help, they needed food, they needed rescue. They even offered to help Sparta subdue their slaves and get them back. And Sparta was so proud and didn't want to take help from Athens. They said no, and that started problems. Um, all right, and then the Peloponnesian War, you have it all written down there. I'm not going to go over it then. You can read it yourself and study because you're falling asleep. That's why I like you to write. So since you're all falling asleep out there, I will stop and let you read about the Peloponnesian War, which was a serious battle between, or a civil war between, the Greeks themselves.